Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today I'm going to go ahead and do a follow up to the build of this lure. I got a lot of comments and a lot of suggestions. One of the issues I was having right off the bat was that the belly hook was hanging on that spinner. So I'm going to solve that right now by cutting the hook that aims straight up and hopefully the two will stay hanging down and we won't have that problem anymore. In the rest of the comments and questions I'll go ahead and address out on the lake. Actually we're going to Rodman Dam. It's about a 35 minute drive from here. So I'll go ahead and cut this hook and we'll be on the road. All right. So I've got it rigged onto this medium action rod. It's got 30 pound braid on it and a 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. I just got it tied directly on there. And I'm gonna try these little coves and try to get it close to uh, cover, see what happens. I'm gonna try retrieving it like a uh, glide bait. Well, a little trick of cutting the hook has done the job. It's no longer uh, getting the blade stuck on it. So while I'm fishing, let me uh, address some of the other questions. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I didn't have a, a wire running all the way from the tail to this pivot point. And the reason is, is well, number one is that it's really a, just a different design. It's not what I was shooting for. And if I did that, I would have to do some kind of propeller, something with a pretty small diameter that just sort of spun in that gap. And I really wanted something with a little more sort of flopping around flash. And the other issue with having a, a wire on there, like an axle wire, is that it would have one more thing that would be fixed that that hook and even the tail hook could get a hold of. And I didn't want to add that complication. Lots of folks question my uh, blade shape which, you know, to each his own. Uh, some folks said uh, a heavier blade. I did put a heavier blade on it, actually, and I found that it actually dropped down more quickly and, and didn't flutter as much and was more likely to hook up to the, to the belly hook. You know, there's a million ways to make a, a lure like this, and I'm not saying mine is the only way. It's just simply the way that I, uh, I sort of dreamt it up. Oof, a little, little long on that cast. I hope I can get it back. <laughs> Come on. Now I'm gonna give this lure a good long try and hopefully we'll pick something up. I wanna show you guys what this does. You can see it swimming and then it has like a really aggressive sort of back and forth action. You can see it there. I just spooked a bald eagle out of the tree. See him flying away? Now he's complaining. There's something really huge swimming right there. I don't know what that is. What is that? Is that a manatee? It's a cow with a little calf and the calf's about to come up. There she is. There she is. Bunch of fish beds in here. I don't see any fish though. I started throwing this little swim bait around the cover. This is something I made a little while back. Whatever it was, took the soft plastic right off the hook. I went back to fishing with the blade belly lure and moved out here to deeper water. I hooked one and the line got hooked up on my prop. I'm trying to get them off. I don't know if I'm going to get them. Meantime, the weather's changing. It's pushing me inshore. Oh, shit. Ah! Oh, 
Oh, oh yes. Woo. What a cluster. He's not huge, but it's a nice two and a half pounder. Oh, sorry, buddy. All right. It looks like it's gonna rain. I'm gonna let this guy go and we'll head back. I managed to avoid that squall line coming through and I didn't get rained on for once but it certainly was a bit of a pain in the butt with that heavy wind chop on the water I couldn't see any of the stump and I really hammered a couple of them pretty hard so I hooked that fish and I wasn't able to get the GoPro to come on and as I was goofing around with the GoPro I realized something was weird with the line and because the trolling motor was pulling us along pretty good the propeller on the outboard was spinning in neutral and just wrapped that line up and I'm just happy that that fish uh, didn't get cut off or just come off the hooks. So it wasn't a huge fish, but it was certainly a respectable two, two and a half pound bass. And considering the size of this lure, I was happy to catch it. So this video I had kind of in reserve in case my vacation was long. So if you're watching this, uh, I'm probably still in Columbia or down in Miami. So I hope you guys enjoyed this follow up on this build and I hope I address most of the questions you guys had. So if all goes well, next Friday we'll be back to actually making lures. And in the meantime, you might see a sailboat update as well. All right, thank you all for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.